But there's a new piece to this puzzle, and it's called runes. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. This is very new. And there was a great article put out. Very quick, I'm going to go over this real quick because I want, I think this could actually be a catalyst for the Bitcoin miners don't have to be this uh, or to have the price to go to this range, even though it'd be good. And it'd be something actually to, to take a look at. And this is why I think that Bitcoin dominance could go even higher. Runes on Bitcoin. What the heck is this? So very easy. What's runes? Runes is a standard token for issuing fungible tokens on Bitcoin. So fungible one for one. One dollar, you can trade it for another dollar. Same thing, right? And then non-fungible are like NFTs, non-fungible tokens, not the same. So fungible, same, non-fungible, not the same. Runes are set to launch in April 2024, coinciding with the up upcoming Bitcoin halving. Interesting. Why was it created? It Runes is a, is a simple protocol, minimal on-chain footprint, and responsible UTXO management. First of all, what the heck is UTXO management? I, I just want to explain this to me because I've, I've, I've heard this before and I've learned it, but it always escapes me. So I want to go over this, make sure everybody knows. So a, a good example is this. If you got 10 bucks in your pocket, someone goes, hey, pay me five bucks. You can't rip 10 bucks in half and go five dollars. It doesn't work like that. It's the same thing with, with Bitcoin. Right. So here's the example. This is a great one from River. So let's say <clears throat> Alex. Which is the one on the left here, wants to send Julia. 5.10 Bitcoin. So how does that work? Well, you got five Bitcoin and 0 0.2 Bitcoin. So you just can't rip it in half. What you got to do is you got to take the five and the 0 0.2, and that's the input. So now you got 5.2 Bitcoin. And you transfer it over here, which is the second step. The wallet creates a new UTXO for Julia in the amount of 5.10. But then you got to put it back and you have a change left over, which is point. Essentially, it's just change, right? 0 0.09. So every time you get change, you get no or, or more unspent transactions, UTXOs, you unspent transaction outputs. So every time you get change, essentially, you're just building this up and building this up and building this up. That's why and sometimes in your wallet, when you send Bitcoin, you're like, what the heck? Why is it so expensive? It's because the more UTXO or the more change that you have in your wallet, the higher the fee is going to be. So there's a trick to do it, which I haven't tried this myself, but you can send the Bitcoin back to your wallet. This is what they recommend in River. And of course you can get rid of those, uh, those UTXOs and uh, go from there. So, but the problem is when you have these UTXO, it builds everything up and it's kind of a burden on the Bitcoin blockchain. That makes sense? I hope it made sense. Cause that's essentially what it is. I try to make it as simple as possible. So. Runes is different from the from the BRC20, which is the ordinals, which is complex, not UTXO based. Latter characteristic causes BRC20 token center to produce excessive junk UTXOs, which bogs down the Bitcoin blockchain, right? Or congestion. Goal of runes is to replace the less efficient ordinals. Awesome. How does it work? Integrates naturally with Bitcoin, which uses UTXOs, helps minimize the creation of junk UTXOs. Makes sense. Token supply of rune is contained in a single UTXO. Awesome. Supply transfer is 128 bit unsigned integer. So the maximum is whatever the heck this number is. Each rune has divisibility, which is the number of decimals have, maximum is 38. So it makes it very simple. Tries not to make so many UTXOs. Doesn't bog down the system. That's it. So what does it do? What does this do? Runes protocol will allow products to issue different types of fungible tokens, such as security tokens, stable coins, governance tokens, whatever you want on the Bitcoin blockchain. You couldn't do that before. I mean, you could with L2s and stuff like that. But, but with this one, <coughs> they're trying to make Bitcoin more usable because let's be honest. I mean, it does a great job of what it does as far as like a store of value and maybe a hedge against inflation. I just, I, I just say it's a four-year store of value. But if you want to build something more on top of it, which is what all the Bitcoin maximalists have been complaining about, this is awesome. You can expand Bitcoin's utility, attract more users who will enjoy near instant and low cost transactions with the protocol's potential lightning compatibility. In other words, runes could help Bitcoin achieve its goal of widespread adoption. Maybe we get to actually buy that cup of coffee with Bitcoin. And the last thing, more transaction fees will be generated as more people interact with runes tokens. So instead of one billionaire moving a ton of Bitcoin across the globe, and he pays 25 bucks and no one else wants to use it because it's just store value, right? Now we could actually build something on top of that and actually pay for things. 
And that means that the more people we actually have doing that, hundreds of millions, maybe billion plus people, that's more revenue for the miners. Incentivizing them to keep securing the Bitcoin network. That's why I think Bitcoin's a big, huge play. And it's not just the Bitcoin itself. Stuff like this is going to revolutionize everything. So I like this. I'll let you know when everything works out <laughs> or when there's new, new information on this. I know we're supposed to have uh, the team from Magic Eden come in as they talk about rune stones and things like that. But again, this is a new, a new platform. So I'll try to keep myself updated and everybody else. But I think this is what I think Bitcoin could make it to be what it's supposed to do. Transactions, peer-to-peer -peer transaction, which one is, was in the white paper. 